Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Adobe has updated Photoshop over and over through the years to the point where it's super easy to create photo composites. In this video, we're going to create a real simple photo composite. We're going to take this image. First, we're going to replace the sky. And then we're going to add a bird into the sky. And I'm just going to show you just how easy it is. Now I'm going to use uh, the sky replacement feature that is built into Photoshop and use a sky that I installed in that tool. So to do that, uh, I have this image here. I'm just going to go up to edit and then down to sky replacement. Now I had mentioned that I had installed some skies into here. You could see it already replaced the sky quite perfectly, I might add. Um, with one of the skies that I already have installed. I use um, a set of skies that I got from OcuDrone. Um, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but in the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website and you could check out their sky images. And I just want to find a sky that matches uh, kind of the scene. We have uh, the light tower. Uh, this is called the electric tower actually in Buffalo. And the uh, light or the sun was to my right, camera right. You can see how the tower is lit on the right, but there's shadow on the left. So I need something that kind of indicates the sun would be somewhere over to my right. And this sky actually looks pretty good. But I'll just kind of go through just these skies real quick and see if I could find something that I like. And I want to make sure that the sky not only matches the image here, but I'm going to have a bird in the sky. So I want to make sure that uh, there's like a place where I could put the bird that maybe the sky would frame the bird properly or in a pleasing way. So I'm just going to kind of go through real quick and see what we got. Um, you know, I kind of like this one. It's a little bit more of a minimalistic sky. So I think I will go with this. Uh, the lighting looks fine uh, the way it is. I think it was high noon when I took this. So the the sun was pretty high up in the sky and you could see how these clouds are lit more towards the top. Um, what I could do, um, I don't really need to adjust anything. I think the color temperature is fine. Uh, I think it's, you know, hitting properly and it's, it's not obscuring anything that I need in the original image. What I might try to do is just flip it. Let's see what it looks like if I flip it and that one might, it might look a little better flipped. It's hard to say. I'll just flip it. So I'm just going to go with that sky. I really don't have to do any adjustments. I'm going to, I'll put it to a duplicate, duplicate layer. I do have a video where I go over in detail all these settings, and I'll have that linked in the description below this video as well, if you want to take a look at it. So we easily replace the sky. Now over here, I also have a loaded into Photoshop an image of a seagull. And I mentioned we're going to throw this in the other image. Now, looking at the lighting on the seagull, you could see how uh, it looks like the sun was more to camera left on this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this image. I'm going to go up to uh, image, image rotation, and flip the canvas horizontal. So now it's looking like the sun is to the camera right. And what I'm going to do also is I'm going to crop the image. I'll clear that crop. So I'm just going to crop it down so we just have mainly the seagull to worry about and not a lot of blue sky. All right, just like that. And we'll click there. Okay, now we have this image. I want to clip out the seagull from the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get any selection tool. The selection tools have a keyboard shortcut of W. And they're in this little cubby here. You can see there's three different tools there. It doesn't matter which tool is active. Just make it active and then go up at the top. You'll see there's a button select subject. And we'll do that. And you can see it selected the seagull. Now we'll go to select and mask to get a look at our selection. And it looks actually pretty good. What I might do is I might come in and I just might smooth it a little bit, feather it a little bit, maybe not that much, a little bit. And I think that actually looks good, just like that. So we're going to output it to a selection uh, and just click OK. 
Now we have our selection. I'm going to hit Command J on my Mac. It's Control J on a PC. And when you have something selected and then you duplicate that layer by hitting Command or Control J, you're actually just going to um, duplicate the item you have selected, in this case, the seagull. So it has all blank pixels around it. I'm going to get the Move tool. The keyboard shortcut for the Move tool is the V key. And it's just click on that seagull, drag it up here, and then drop it on our image. And I dropped it right there. I don't think I want it right there. I want it right there, but it's a little too big. It's a little bit too obnoxious. So I'm going to uh, make it a bit smaller. I'm going to hit Command T on my Mac. It's Control T on a PC, and that puts you in what's called free transform mode. And then you could grab any of these handles, and you could shrink down your whatever it is, or you can make it larger if you need to. And I could have it going maybe flying out of the frame, in the frame. I could put it anywhere I want. I'll just put it right there, and we'll click OK. Now, one thing um, about the seagull in general is it's moving. So it may not be in perfect focus. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blur it just slightly. That way, if anyone like puts their nose right up to the image, the seagull won't be so super sharp and look unnatural. So right now, I'm really done with the composite, but I want to blur that seagull just a little bit. So I'm going to go up to Filter, down to Blur, and we're just going to add some Gaussian Blur. You could try to add some Motion Blur if you think that would make it look more realistic. But in this case, you know, they don't know what shutter speed I shot at. I could have shot at one, you know, eight thousandth of a second. It would have really froze the seagull. But still, I don't think it would be that super crisp you know, and sharp. Now, obviously, I've just blurred it right out, so we got to bring this down. So we're just going to blur it a little bit, I think around two, three pixels. This really depends on the resolution of the entire image or the item that you're blurring out. I mean, if I go up to 4.4 pixels, I could see on my computer looking at it, it's real blurry right now. I don't want it that blurry. I just want it a little blurry, like two pixels, like that. And that's it. That's my composite. I replaced the sky and I put a bird up in the sky, flying through the sky. Now, if you want to do some more adjustments, let's say you want to add a, an adjustment layer. And let's just add a um, levels adjustment layer. And as you could see that when I do this, I could then just adjust the image more so. Like this, if I need to. If I wanted to, though make it so that it just affects the seagull, what I need to do is click on, click on this little icon right here. That's, that's to clip it to the layer directly below it. Now you'll see that it's only affecting the seagull. Now I don't need to do this on this image, but I wanted to bring it up because there are times when, you're, when you do a composite and you add an item onto the image, in this case I added the bird, the bird might be too too bright or too dark, and you may want to come in and go get a levels adjustment and adjust the brightness of, in this case, the bird. And you can see how, when by default, it's going to do everything. You need to clip it to that bird layer, the layer directly below it, and then it will only affect the bird. So I just wanted to mention that so that when you do your composite, you could really sell it and make it look realistic by making sure that the uh, brightness level of whatever you dropped onto the image matches the scene. That's it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.